Mega showdown we got here in the SEC. This time, West opponents, Alabama on the road at Arkansas. Night game, Nick Saban 15-0 and against Arkansas during his time at Alabama. Of course, last season, Alabama won 42-35 in Bryant-Denny. This season, much different story when it comes to the environment that the Crimson Tide are walking into. It's going to be a buzzsaw down there in Arkansas against a Razorback team fighting for their lives, backs against the wall after a disappointing performance. Sam Pittman saying all the right things, but, you know, we don't really know how Arkansas will respond until we see them on Saturday. If they face some adversity, and, and by God, they're probably going to face some adversity. The key is you don't want it to be early. You don't want – there's been many a time in this series, of course, you know, it's been lopsided for a long time until – they get things going here. There's not been many of these that have been competitive. But Alabama has been able to just kind of rip Arkansas's heart out early when I think of games in this series. Paramount that Arkansas keeps this game competitive in the second half. And it, we'll get to Sam Pittman's comments here in a moment. Carry that fight into the second half. They've had real, real issues playing in the third quarter. You could play outstanding for three quarters. You fail to show up for a single quarter, Alabama will slice and dice and kill you. Just look at these numbers. Alabama's defense, SEC rankings here. Number one scoring, number one pass efficiency, number one in your rushing yards allowed. They have not allowed a passing touchdown yet and have only allowed two rushing touchdowns. Now, I know you look at their opponents, you know, Utah State, Texas, Vanderbilt, some other scrub, ULM, I think it was. So I get it. Skewed, possibly. They've not faced an offense near the caliber of Arkansas. But this is a unit that is playing the best football they've played in, in years. They're for Nick Saban. They're confident coming into this ball game. K.J. Jefferson has got to make plays that have not been made against this Arkansas defense. He's got the weapons to do it. Arkansas offense, number eight in the SEC in scoring. Again, I think you could kind of flip it to what I'm saying about Alabama. I think I'm not sitting here saying Arkansas is the number eight offense in the SEC. That's just where their scoring is. But I think that's a factor of playing A&M, South Carolina, Cincinnati, and then even the Missouri State game tested you. I don't think anyone's had a tougher go of it so far in the SEC. But how about this? Despite having said that, Arkansas number two in pass efficiency, number two in rushing, and only five turnovers. Cannot turn the ball over. Cannot stress that enough. You you have one turnover in this ball game. You better force two. I mean that because Alabama will kill you on that. Key to the game. Arkansas's got to get after Bryce Young. Twenty sacks, number one in the SEC. Like any quarterback, you'd imagine. I'm looking here at the uh, numbers for for Bryce Young. When he's under pressure, I mean, his numbers dip by about half. So, I mean, it goes without saying, quarterbacks not as good when they are getting pressured, when they're getting rattled, when they're getting hit. That's the key to Arkansas. You cannot sit back here and let Bryce Young pick you apart because he'll do it all day long. But I thought this was an interesting question Sam Pittman had in his presser here. K.J. Jefferson, is he trying to do too much? Because that's a little bit of a worry too, but you kind of – you don't want him jumping in from the five, of course, but you need him to be kind of Superman because he's going up against Bryce Young, one of the best players, if not the best player in the country. He's going to have to match him score for score to keep Arkansas in this ball game. Let's kick it over to Sam Pittman on K.J. Jefferson, maybe pushing things a little, maybe trying to do a little too much maybe. Thoughts on Bryce Young and Arkansas struggles Coming out of halftime, I thought this was pretty interesting. They're they're at least addressing it. We'll see if it works on Saturday. Oh yeah, with that uh, KJ is carried. I mean, he's been great quarterback for you for two years. Yeah. Is he at times though trying to maybe do too much this year? I don't. Th- I, I I mean, I don't think so. I think I think his ball security hasn't been as good as what it was. You know, we, we're uh, a year ago uh, carrying it, and. Uh, uh, I think he just gets caught up in the moment. If you look back at Ole Miss last year, he dove over those three guys and extended the ball and all that kind of stuff. And it was, you know, I think he, I think he, uh, 
is trying to win the game, and probably that's about that's about it. To be honest with you. Sam, it looks like like Bryce Young's maybe running the ball a little yeah. bit more. And um, you mentioned you might be even better than last year. What, what are you seeing from him? What really impresses you about him? A lot of confidence in everything he does, whether he's throwing, whether he's scrambling. He'll stay in the pocket till the last second. Um, when he gets outside the pocket, uh, he look, just looks comfortable. Like, you know, I'm, I could run it for a touchdown. I can throw it for a touchdown. I'm just going to do – kind of whichever one I decide to do. And he's been so hard to tackle uh, for the teams that he's been playing. Uh, Texas is the only team really that put much pressure on them at all, and they they did pressure them well. Uh, but I just think he's playing with a extreme amount of confidence, and, and he's obviously been a good player for probably since he was in sixth grade or whatever, you know, but. Very, 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 very confident. Got a lot of players around him. Got some really good bags. And also, I was looking at your some stats here. You've outscored opponents in every quarter except for the third. You've yeah. been outscored 41-13. you have any idea what's going on there? Can you put your finger well, on anything? Uh, no. I mean, I wish I did. Uh, we're going to change up. I mean, we're going to have halftime at practice this week. We're just going to stop. And then we're going to come back and go good on good right when we come off of halftime and we're going to, we're going to change the way we stretch, uh, coming out of the half and, uh, we got to change something and you know what we're trying to do. We're trying to put it in our mind that we got to get going. Um, we couldn't get out of our funk, uh, Saturday. I mean, we're still up uh, while the offense and I met with the, with the, with the staff. And then while they were meeting, trying to judge. I was in the locker room talking to our kids because you could feel that we we were behind by 30 and we were up and you could feel it. And so I went in and started talking to them about, you know, what we have to do and made them aware that, you know, we haven't been, a, haven't started fast in the third quarter and things of that nature. And it was just blah, you know, for, for a few minutes on the clock, maybe the entire third quarter. And uh, it's been that way the entire year. You always worry about starting fast in the game, and we've been okay with that. It's it's the second half where we've – I think every game this year we've we've been ahead or, you know, we were behind it at, at uh, Missouri State, but we've been worse. We've They've either been closer to us or we've been worse behind in the third quarter of every game. And uh, we have opportunities to – put people away and uh, just haven't been able to do it. So it's on our mind. Uh, we're going to change a few things up at, pr the, at practice to see if we can emphasize a little bit better. Now on the flip side, Hey, you know, we, we've, I talked a lot about Alabama's defense there and I don't want to say they're lacking by any means, but we're a month into the season and Saban says, we're still trying to find our identity on offense. And that's not exactly what you want to hear especially when you're returning the Heisman winning quarterback. But with the new running backs, new receivers, reshuffled offensive line, maybe that's just what you're going to get. They struggled mightily against Texas. Will that continue? And like I said in the interview there with Marler, I'm a little concerned that, you know, the narrative all week is Alabama struggles on the road. Alabama struggles on the road. And that's the emphasis. And they get that cleaned up and they take care of business on the road. If I'm an Arkansas fan, that's what I worry about. But, hell, I show up rowdy and, and get as loud as I can for this ball game because this is going on two years now where Alabama's struggling on the road in conference play and, hell, against Texas again, out of conference. So you can be a real, real factor in this game. I don't care how good Bryce Young is. He has turned the ball over. He had multiple interceptions in the – what was it, the ULM game in, in the first half and everything. So – He's not flawless by any means. It's still a work in progress on offense. And again, that's you know, if, if KJ Jefferson's scoring in bunches, maybe Alabama starts pressing a little bit. The plays right into your hands, getting pressured. You force the issue. That's going to lead to turnovers. That's how they were defeated in College Station last year. I remember a key turnover Bryce Young had 
in the it was either on the in the end zone or on the goal line. And it, I remember AM brought it out. I mean, that's what it takes to beat Alabama. Eliminate their scoring opportunities, turn the ball over. Let's kick it over to Saban on lack of uh, offensive identity a couple games into the season and Bryce Young's continued growth in the offense. How would you characterize the team's offensive identity after four games? You know, I think you build an identity over a season, uh, and we're going to continue to try to do that so that we have balance and we feature the players that we have on our team um, so that they have the best opportunities to be successful. Uh, I think there's been times when we've done that extremely well, and there's times that um, we haven't. But I, I really can't. You know, we made a lot of explosive plays in the last game, which we want to continue to be able to do, to utilize the skill players that we have and run the ball effectively when we need to. So we're still, you know, building on that identity, but I think the players are making really good progress. And I just wanted to ask you about KJ Jefferson, uh, just his size and how tough he is if in coaching or in practice this week, are you really focusing on wrapping up and tackling and just how dynamic of a threat is he both as a passer and a runner? Well, I mentioned before what a dynamic player that he is. Um, big, strong guy, hard to tackle, hard to sack, hard to get on the ground, uh, can push the pile and run over people when he runs quarterback runs. Very physical, you know, player. Um, so all those things that you mentioned are certainly things that we want to emphasize this week. But you can't minimize the effectiveness of this guy as a passer. You know, he is really, really good. He's got a strong arm, uh, throws uh, the deep ball well, and, you know, they make a lot of explosive plays uh, because they run the ball extremely well. They have really good play action passes, but he executes it both ways very, very well. Bryce obviously had a big year for you guys last year, but where have you seen him improve the most from year one as a starter to now? Well, I think the big thing is he's got a lot of new people around him, uh, and I think that it creates tremendous value for him, as he did in the last game, when he makes it work with the players that we have now. And I think each week we've done a little bit better job of that, and uh, I think to have continued growth in that area is important for him and for us. Now, final matchup I want to pre 